What is something Americans should know before visiting England? They number their floors differently. Our second floor is their first floor. So if you are assigned room 105 in a hotel, head up the stairs. Our first floor is their ground floor. Yup, floor zero is a thing here and it's at ground level. It's a huge stereotype, but we're generally less effused with our emotions. For example, if you hear a British person say that something is fantastic, there's a high possibly they're having a terrible day. If you hear a British person say that something is not bad, this actually means that it is brilliant. Oh yeah any adjective above adequate is most likely being used sarcastically. They drive on the opposite side of the road in the UK, so you ought to look right first, not left first, when crossing the street in order to avoid being hit by traffic. Don't worry when exiting air bases though as you won't be deported if you can get home quickly. Never try to do a British accent. It is single-handedly the most annoying thing anyone can do if you don't actually have an English accent. If I could reintroduce capital punishment but people could only be executed for one thing, it would be this. For the love of God and all that is holy, when you're on an escalator, stand to the right. I was unaware of this. And I got a severe tutting. Note that an English tutting is the equivalent of an American screaming hey jackass. Move your freaking butt at the top of their lungs. Crap, I was all for telling them that you should stand on the left and stop to compose yourself at the end of the escalator. Plus remember to stop as you come out of the tube station and look up in the all around. We like to queue. We are polite but don't do loud obnoxious year welcome type stuff. We can drink. A lot. Anything more than a 2 hour drive is a long way. Still remember one time I spent a few weeks in Oxford, the city, not the university to learn English as a young teen and in my country, Belgium. We never queue for buses so when I tried to get on the bus as I normally would, an older man just blurted out excuse me, miss, there's a queue. He sounded outraged and I've never forgotten to queue ever since whenever I visit England. Americans speak far louder than they realize sometimes. Try to keep your volume appropriate for your surroundings. Ancestry isn't noteworthy here. When Americans say they're X percent, insert country, we really don't care. You're still just an American to us. Also don't make the mistake of visiting only London. The rest of our country has some incredible places that are definitely worth visiting too. And most importantly, don't base your opinion of England on what you see on Reddit. Reddit does not accurately depict English culture or England's diversity. Like at all. People on Reddit tend to mostly be from very similar backgrounds and don't reflect England's actual population very well. I took a train to London from Exeter a few years back with my dad to watch something up at the IMAX cinema as per a little tradition of ours. This was about 8ish in the morning and we took our seats. In front of us were two blokes having a drink. Fast forward about 30 minutes and two couples dressed like they were out of the 1950s 60s came and sat opposite us. Their look caught the attention of the older bloke sitting in front of me, an Irishman by the name of Fergus I think, and he would not stop talking. He got yous all involved and he was an absolute delight of a man. Most of the time us English are pretty antisocial in public to strangers, but this man was so positive and upbeat he somehow made us all feel like we knew him for years. Didn't take too long until we were playing drinking games and he even pulled a bottle of port and an entire cheese board from his suitcase to share with us. Sometimes you just need to write catalyst to make us a little louder. At my first job some Americans came in for a cup of tea, or as they called it, afternoon tea, at about 3pm and wanted to know where the nearest castle is. This was in the home counties where there aren't many castles, and if there were you'd want to be arriving around 10am. I found it very difficult to explain all this as a teenager mind. So basically don't do that. England is small but that doesn't mean you can teleport from one end to the other. FFS don't think you've experienced England just because you've been to London. By all means sightsee in the capital but England and the UK as a whole are so much more than just London. Two seemingly tiny but very important things. 1. Shire as in Hertfordshire is pronounced shook, not shire. 2. 
Borough or burger as in Edinburgh is pronounced Bureau, not Borough. One thing I will say is that I love meeting Americans who explore more of the country than just London. Yes it's the capital but it's just one city and it doesn't represent what England is like. There are so many other wonderful places to see, urban and rural, that have unique histories, cultures, food and landscapes. Reading the explanation of Shire and Borough was a mess for my inner monologue, lol. England is not the same as Britain. Scottish, Welsh and Irish people will probably get a bit annoyed if you call them or their country English. I usually refer to them as subjects or peasants that way you don't have to worry about geography. Service charges sometimes included with the bill and people do not expect you to tip. It's nice if you do and English people often do tip 10% as a standard, but no one will expect a tip or be annoyed they didn't get one. Sometimes people aren't actually allowed to take tips and I'm men at workplaces the tips are pulled and shared evenly, so tipping your brilliant waitress generously might not mean they get the whole thing. This. British people tip wait staff for good service, not just for doing their jobs, because wait staff are paid decent wages. They don't rely on tips and it's not expected. Most of the obvious stuff has already been said so I'll just say this. The term Asian is different in the UK and the US. In the US, it means someone from the Far East, i.e. Japan, Korea, China etc. But in the UK, it means someone from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka etc. I found this varied depending on where you are in the UK. When I went to uni anyone from the Midlands or South refer to Asian as from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka etc. But anyone from the North, especially Northwest, was always referring to people from China, Japan, Korea. Visited during mid-December once and just couldn't believe that the sun set at like 5pm and that it literally rains or is overcast all day, every day. Sometimes it starts going dark at 3pm. There are some wonderful old churches in England. At the churches are some wonderful old cemeteries, in these cemeteries there are often, by tradition, huge pine trees, but not like any pine tree you have seen before these pine trees have berries. The berries look a lot like pomegranate pods mixed with olives each with a little seed in the center. You might wonder to yourself how I wonder what pine tree berries taste like since I have never seen such a thing. You might, like one such individual. Grab a few and start popping the pods and spitting out the seeds unbeknownst to me that if I had chewed and swallowed even a few of the seeds I would have been dead very quickly with likely no traces to the cause. Only to find out weeks later that what you stumbled upon is called a yew tree, otherwise named tree of the dead. Their yews, the wood is excellent for making bows to shoot your enemy with. As a Londoner when you catch the tube in London queue nicely, wait for people to get off first. Stand on the right side of the escalator. Don't block the escalator. British people are polite until you block the escalator. You'll find passive aggressive people telling you to stand on the right. These are things that really pee Londoners off about American tourist. Another rule we don't want your life story. No one talks on the tube we won't even make eye contact. Main rule don't talk about religion. A lot of English will absolutely cringe with embarrassment if that topic comes up. Oh British people think Trump an idiot. They will laugh openly about him, even though we have Boris. If you're you're with a group of English people don't mention Brexit unless you want to watch a punch up and same goes for Scottish independence in Scotland. Although we have free healthcare it is only for us. If you get ill our NHS will hunt you down like Liam Neeson and taken to get their cash. So make sure your insurance covers you and bring the details. First time I've heard that one. Whoa. 1. No free refills. 2. Customer service in restaurants. ETC is absolute garbage compared to the US but still the best you're gonna get in Europe. 3. Prices for food in restaurants is insane and they value quality over quantity, so serving sizes will be tiny, expensive, and delicious. 4. They talk super quiet and will be embarrassed if you speak to them in a loud, or, for Americans, average, voice. 5. Every road you come to while walking repeat look right, look right, look right or plan to be flattened. 6. People here in England are generally wonderful and have the best sense of humor. 7. The British middle class will crawl over broken glass to avoid conflicts so, if someone cuts you off in traffic or stops just before running you down with their car it is not appropriate, as it is in America. 
to challenge him to fisticuffs while banging on the hood, bonnet of his car, nor is it appropriate to lay into your horn and give them the finger. It's considered being loud which is a cardinal sin here. 8. Very few things are open 24 hours here, outside of London. So if you have a 2am fast food craving, tough, and the most important rule of all. 9. Plenty of hot members of the royal family will hit on you. Do not marry into the royal family, or at least do, like, a modicum of research before you do, that way you won't be surprised at how tough the British press can be. It utterly baffled me that your television channels just stop broadcasting crap in the middle of the night and then start up again at like 6am. I don't think American channels have done that in 50 years. People really don't yell and flip off other drivers in England. Driving makes me more angry than any activity on earth. I'm extremely conflict avoidant and even I yell and flip people off sometimes. I find it hard to believe an entire nation could not do it. If someone bumps into you, you say sorry to them first, because it's always your fault you've put yourself in a position where they couldn't but bump into you. In London, natural walking paces at Olympic 50 km speeds, never dawdle. They keep their eggs on the countertop, not in the fridge. In the US, by law, eggs must be sprayed off to clean them if you're selling them commercially. This strips the bloom, a coating on the eggshell that prevents air and bacteria from penetrating it. If you don't fridge them, they'll go off in a few days. In the UK, they don't spray their eggs, so they maintain their bloom. Fresh, and washed eggs can keep at room temperature for well over a month. I'm American. Have chickens. Don't wash eggs. Have eaten 3 month old unfridged eggs. People here aren't as patriotic as you Americans. You won't see many people with British or English flags on their houses and cars, unless there's a football game. I moved to Birmingham recently, and have never seen so many England flags on flagpoles. They have had them up since I arrived in March, and haven't taken them down since the Euros ended. So I assume they keep them up all the time. You don't see that much down in London where I'm from. British food is actually really good, and the Indian is also very excellent. But the type of restaurants they don't have in America that I would definitely recommend trying is a proper Turkish restaurant. Not some crap takeaway but a proper place using the wood fires. Also don't call it England. Comma stick with Britain or UK. Calling it England is correct if OP is actually only going to England. Don't see the issue with that at all. Two food drink things I noticed. They tend to be comparatively stingy with water in restaurants. They seem to really love textural variation in food. A few years ago I saw Subway advertising the fact that they now have iceberg lettuce. Like, that was the entirety of the advertisement. Also, there seem to be a large amount of chocolates and such that are basically the same except for some difference in texture. I don't have a problem with water in restaurants. I always request it and never been refused. I think it's generally not served unless requested because most people drink something else with the meal, and we don't commonly drink water alongside other drinks. Don't say bless you when someone sneezes, it's considered rude. Found out when I was riding the tube, a woman sneezed, I said bless you, and she flipped me off. Wearing soccer jerseys in the UK is like wearing gang colors. Don't wear them in public. Co-worker on a business trip in the UK and was wearing a soccer jersey. He went into bar with fans from another team and got beat up so bad that he lost one eye and his jaw was shattered. This one is rarely mentioned whenever this question comes up but children are going to bully you because of your accent. At least where I'm from. There are loads of nice places to see which aren't London, Oxford and Cambridge. Those are great but so are other places. Try Shrewsbury, Liverpool, Leeds, Newcastle, Norwich, Exeter. LOL. I pass that as those, nice, places are great, but so are other places, such as, Shrewsbury, Liverpool, Leeds. Cities and regions have distinct accents and even cultures. Outside of tourist areas they'll understand you but you may struggle with local accents in Northumbria, Black Country, Potteries, Yorkshire, Merseyside, West Country etc. Fortunately, most people are polite and will do their utmost to make their accent easier for you. 
It's not the USA. Research it before visiting and don't make the rest of us look bad. Follow their customs, rules, and laws. Don't be a Karen. If you hire a car or any other vehicle, a triangular sign with a red border and the words give way on it is the equivalent of a yield sign. If you are approaching such a sign, it's best not to sail straight through the junction at full speed while listening uncomprehendingly to the English bloke in the back seat who is increasingly desperately shouting give way, give way, as if that's going to help. Yes, so, avoid that. People who aren't serving Americans, like a barista or a waiter, typically are very curious and confounded when they meet an American. They may ask many questions and if you develop a relationship they'll make fun of you because Brits have free healthcare. They should know that, and bear with me on this one. People from England, speak English. That's right Karens, be safe out there. That we saved them from the Nazis and rebuilt their country after the war so they have no reason to give us a hard time also we won the war against the mess. They will certainly agree and appreciate you saying so at the local. Our food tastes like absolutely nothing. Add salt to everything. Support your local kebab shop. Edit. Our food does taste like crap. I suggest you leave the UK and try actual food. That England and most of the rest of the world really don't like us very much and if we were smarter we would not keep getting involved with their problems or allowing them to use us as their dumping grounds and return all those that they send here. For everything. N. Shadows. We don't really like anyone but we don't really hate anyone either. You will get relentlessly ripped the crap out of if any chav hears your accent so you may as well pretend you are deaf or mute. People are gonna make jokes about you being American, and they're probably going to have all kinds of silly assumptions based upon Hollywood and whatever other pop culture they picked up. Take it in the good humor it's intended. If an English person is joking around with you the chances are they like you. Puddings are desserts, not puddings. Cakes and pies are puddings. On my first trip to London, I was really upset that all they ever offered for dessert was goddamn puddings. Took the Great Western from London to Bristol for a business trip years ago. There were places along the way where I was genuinely having a difficult time understanding what people were saying. From the US Southwest, originally. Haha <laughs> yes and places it can get really difficult and I don't think you ever really get used to it. Saying that I'm from Yorkshire so when I speak fast that tends to disappear a bit. I've heard that can be confusing for some people from other places. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.